Hi there, welcome to www.highschoolmaths.co.uk. Today we're going to take a look at calculating standard deviation. So we've got two different formulas that are used for calculating standard deviation and the we're going to look today at the first method of the first formula which is the one in the yellow box here. So there's a few things to talk about uh, beforehand. The sigma, that, this kind of funny looking E shape here, uh, that means sum of, which basically means the total of x minus x bar squared. Okay, so it's just a fancy way of saying total, total something up. So means sum up. And x bar is the other thing here that you want to seen before, means average, or actually it means the mean. <laughs> uh, so I'll write that as x bar as the mean. And finally, n is how many numbers you have. Okay, so that's the different things that are coming up in this formula. SD just stands for standard deviation. And what we're going to do is look at an example of how that all works together. So what I'm going to do is just shift everything over to one side. Okay, so I've got a little bit of space to work. And here we are going to try and squeeze the work in in this kind of section here. So there is quite a lot of working for this question. The good thing is it's a really scripted question. So once you've got the hang of it, that's you. It won't really change much. Okay, so what we really need for this, first of all, is the x bar, the mean. That's probably the easiest place to start off. Okay, so x bar is the mean, and we just add all the numbers up and divide by how many there are. Okay, so if we add all those numbers up, let me just get the calculator. Um, that's 162. And we're dividing by five because it's five numbers, so that gives us 32.4. Okay, so the mean price of a packet of crisps from these five retailers was 32.4 pence. Okay, we don't really need the answer in there because that's not a final answer, um, but it doesn't, so the units in there, um, but it doesn't hurt to put units in. Okay, so that, that's the kind of average price using the mean. Now, the standard deviation, what standard deviation does is, as it says up the top, measure spread of values, but some really accurate way uh, of measuring a spread of values. So it's kind of a lot, a lot better than the def using the range and more accurate probably than using the semi-enter quartile range, which you would use with your quartile work as well. Okay, so what we're going to do is we want this, this top line of a function, this sig sigma or sum of x minus x bar squared. That's really complicated uh, looking thing. So what we're going to do is break it down into three parts using a table. So we're going to have our x values, which I'll explain in a second, our x minus x bar values, and our x minus x bar squared values. Okay. X is just your original values, so the prices of the packets across here. So we pop them in 32, 40, 35, 25, and 30. Okay, x minus x bar is just the x take away 32.4. So each time you're going to be taking away 32.4. So I'm going to try and squeeze this in. I wouldn't recommend you show the working for this every time, um, but just so we know what we're doing, 32 minus 32.4. And I'm going to run out of space here, but that's fine. So that's negative 0 0.4. And then you would do 40 minus 32.4, and that would be 7.6. And we would do that the same thing with every value there. So we would just take away. So that would give us 2.6 for the third, negative 7.4 for the next one, and negative 2.4 for the last one. Okay, so this these are our x minus x bar values. In the last column, what we're going to do is we're going to square each one of them. So we're going to take a negative 0.4, I'm going to square that. We're going to take the 7.6. I'm going to square that. Now, because you're squaring them, you when you square in a, a, any number, you will always get a positive answer. So even if you're squaring a negative, like a negative 0 0.4 here, you're going to get a positive answer. So all of our answers here should be positive. So we get 0 0.16, 0 0.17, 0 0.18, 0 0.19, 0 0.20, 0 0.21, 0 0.22, 0 0.23, 0 0.24, 0 0.25, 0 0.26, 0 0.27, 0 0.
we get 57.76, we get 6.76, 54.76, 58.76, 6. Okay, now what we're going to do at the bottom of this column is we're going to total these up. If we do that, just take them all into the calculator, we get 125.2. Okay, now what that is, is that's the total of the x minus x bar squared. So, or in other words, the sum of the x minus x bar squared. So that value there is our top line. Okay. So that's our top line of our standard deviation calculation, which is the bit that really looks complicated. So if we take our standard deviation formula, we just, all we're doing is replacing, now that we've done all this work in the table, we're replacing the top line, we're substituting in the value for the top line is 125.2. And that uh, takes care of that complicated looking top line. The table essentially deals with that. N minus one, well there's N is five, because there's five numbers. Okay, so it's five minus one. So that's the square root of 125.2 over four, which is the square root of 31.3, which ends up being 5.59. Okay, so your standard deviation is 5.59, your mean was 32.4. That's going to come into play with part B. So part B, part B says the mean price of a different brand of crisps was 26 pence and standard deviation was 2.1. Make two valid comparisons between the two brands. Okay, so we're going to, I'm going to bullet point this. I find that generally makes it easier to kind of keep track of what you're doing. So we're going to compare the means first. So the first packet of crisps was more expensive. That's what you're looking to say. Or you could say the second packet of crisps was cheaper. It's entirely up to you which one, way you want to put it. I'm going to compare the first to the second each time. I'm going to say the first packet of uh, crisps, on average, let's say on average, the first packet of crisps was cheaper. And then we're going to do a little numerical comparison in brackets. 32.4, ah, sorry, that's wrong. Was The first packet of crisp was not cheaper. Uh, the first packet of crisp was more expensive. Do, 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 do. So 32.4 is greater than 26. There's units in this one. Okay, so we're saying the first packet of crisps was on average more expensive. Now, what we're looking to do here, we're looking to put it into more, you know, real life terminology. We're not wanting to use the word mean because most people would be recognized the word average. So we're saying on average rather than saying directly the mean was lower in the second packet. We're looking for a, a kind of real life statement here. So the first packet of crisps were more expensive because 32.4 is greater than 26 and the best way to start it is using those words on average because that shows that you're talking about the average and you know that's what the mean is measuring so you, i would recommend you just start that first statement with those words on average the second statement probably the slightly more complicated one is comparing the standard deviation and the standard deviation just measures the range of the spread of values so the bigger the number the more spread out the values are going to be and again if you look at the first one the first one was 5.59 the second one was 2.1 Okay, so that means the first packet of crisps had a more varied or more spread out range of values or range of prices. And that's what we want to say. Okay, so this one is going to start, we're going to, we're going to make, again, I'm going to compare first to second, but you could compare the second to the first. So we would say the price of the first packet of crisps or the prices sorry of the first pack of crisps were more varied you can use the word more spread out it's up to you uh, so they're more varied since 5.59 is bigger than or greater than 2.1 okay 
And again, we've got that numerical comparison there showing we know what numbers we're comparing. And if you wanted to compare the second with the first, you could say the price of the second packet of crisps was less varied since 2.1 is less than 5.59. And that, that's fine. As long as you're kind of consistent with your comparison and the sentence makes sense, that's totally fine. You can do it whatever way you want. Um, I would just choose one and stick to that for both of your bullet points. So that's how that's method one for calculating standard deviation. There is an alternative formula, which is quite popular too. And the working for that is slightly different. It still uses a very similar kind of structure, but there is slightly different working as you go through that question. So if this isn't the method you use, then go and check the other methods. And hopefully you found that helpful. For other maths videos and resources, please visit www.highschoolmaths.co.uk. If you did like the video, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe. And please remember to share the video with your friends. Thanks for watching and have a mathematical day.